Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One. It's Friday, August the 17th, the year 2018. Let's talk trading, the weekly wrap-up. Oh, first, um, since I've, you know, let you guys know that I've been involved in the union um, and doing things, and they re-ran my election, but I won both seats. So, ha-ha in their face. And now I'm running for statewide union president, and the ballots go out beginning of next month, and they'll be in before the end of next month, September, and we'll see what happens. Anyway, weekly wrap-up, trading. Been an interesting week. We had some good movement earlier in the week. Um, and hopefully this whole week you've been employing your risk and money management. Uh, you can see the yen has dropped back down into that monthly wick zone. And one of the things we went over was, you know, keeping it simple, um, not trying to split hairs, um, because, you know, trading really is, I mean, simply guessing <laughs> or, or you could say predicting or, you know, which direction price is going to move from this point forward. Is it going to move up or is it going to move down? And by how much? I mean, that's pretty much what we're doing. So we take a look here and we can see on the monthly that we're inside this wick zone. Now, this wick zone here is only about, what, 20... Oh, what's that? 29 pips. Just call it 30 pips. So chances are price is going to break out of this range. I mean, that's just what's going to happen not going to stay there does it come back down or does it go back up you know we don't know and you can see here maybe there's a little hint you see that that monthly pivot hasn't been taken out there's a monthly pivot that hasn't been taken out you can see that one got taken out and that one got taken out so once again and even there you see that monthly pivot got taken out this monthly pivot sometimes it takes a while but you know, chances are this monthly pivot at 109.82 is going to get taken out. And there's this other one right here at 107.59. Might not happen this year, but, you know, it might get taken out. And we look at the weekly. We're dropped out of the uh, lower wick zone there. And these two gaps did not fill. So... We got two that didn't fill. And on the daily, you see here, we dropped out of the lower wick zone. We went to the upper, dropped out of the upper wick zone. So somebody had asked, oh, I think it was via email, um, why don't we trade going into the wick zone? Well, depending on the trade, you just might take that trade, but that's not a wick zone trade. Wick zone is trading outside or exiting the wick zone and let's see one two three four pairs over a hundred pips and the yen at a you know respectable 73 range on the day and uh just so you know the high op and op low these are the numbers that we look at here how far price moved away from the open and you can see here a, a big fat zero on the uh, euro that just means price opened and just took off 60 pips to the upside so for buy zone traders you can see you know what kind of pips you could be making here see on the yen you could take away 10, so you could say 7 to the upside, 47 to the downside. And some of these never triggered to the downside. Well, this one did, but not much. The euro, US dollar. And here we go, talking about the buy zone. You see here it went in, came back out. Either you scratch the trade or you wound up stopping either at the open or at the uh, buy zone. And here, buy zone, once again, if you stayed in that trade, let that candle close, the new candle open, fell back. That's where you should have taken profit, right there. And then here, 
short trade. Once again, the pivot was there. You see it filled it that first hour, came back. That should have been your hint to exit with a profit rather than suffer a loss on that hour. And then here you see, once again, went to the pivot, triggered and nice movement to the downside. And the rat zone, you can see here, it poked out, poked out again, poked out a third time. And, you know, using your rat reversal trades right here, you see there was profit to be made entering in the green rat zone with a green rat reversal trade. Actually, now I'm wondering here, let's just take a look here. So here was the lowest open. So you put in a new low, came back, hit that lowest open. You could have taken a trade for profit there. And then here, it came back in. Even though the H1 was red, we could take the chance going with that highest open trade. And once again, there was profit to be made. Yes, that's Harry hindsight, but that's how you analyze it in real time, whether or not you want to take that trade. Whoops, what did I do? There we go. And we've already showed that the pivot got taken out. Uh, let's see, we have, there's the weekly open right here. Weekly S1, monthly S1. And here's the weekly pivot. Oh, uh, is where? Where's the weekly pivot for this week? Hmm. Is that the weekly? That must be the weekly pivot right here. I wonder why that line doesn't carry the whole way. Interesting. That's an indicator I modified, so I'll have to check that one out. I wonder why it's not carrying through. It's yesterday's, this is yesterday's high. Oh, yeah, here's the weekly pivot. It's the dotted line. My mistake. See, weekly's dotted. And the monthly is dashed. And the dailies are solid. Oh, just so I mention, in case you're wondering, it's the SDK pivots that I modified. Sometimes you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You just want to improve on it. So you use other people's code and you build on it. That's how civilization grows. You don't, each civilization doesn't come along and reinvent the wheel and the mousetrap, right? And once again, daily pivot, you can see it taken out. Let's just switch over to the monthly. You can see here, it's been what, five, over five years since the pivot hasn't been taken out. And once again, sometimes it might take a month or two or maybe even a year to, to take out a pivot but you can see these pivots get taken out. And while we're looking at it, the weekly, we've got two weekly pivots that have been missed here. Got one at 109.17 and one at 107.46. But since then, you have to go back a couple of years to uh, come up with a missed pivot. And continuing weekly wrap up, as always, you know, we look to see these trades right there inside the skull. <laughs> you see, there was a one ball at the top, right? And then it was red at the line. And then we got a three ball at the bottom, green at the line, one ball at the top. And then we got a red at the line. And one ball at the top, see, red at the line again. I mean, it's just really so, 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 so simple um, trading this way. And we're not really trying to make the mega pips. We'll take them if we get them, but we're just going to just play off of the semaphores and trade accordingly. Nothing fancy. Nothing that difficult. 
And here we see once again trading with the H1 candle color at the line. At the lines from the previous daily session. Or you can just use just every 10 pips or every 5 pips. Either way. It's the same trade. And you can see here on the week, close the open. See yen's right back near that open. And you can see the other pairs, how they are winding up. The CAD, big loser. Now let's see, for the week, who's the big winner? Ah, Canadian franc, 68 pips. And the wick zone. Price doesn't like staying in the wick zone. In and out, in and out, as you can see here. And right here. In a real time. Randy, real time trade. Price is dropping out. I should probably put the spread dots on this uh on this template. Instead of having this line come all the way across. Might have to do that. And as you can see here, in the whole low, high open, low open, there was your opportunity right here for lowest open. Nice trade. And here, inventory reduction bars. Uh, we have a short trigger here and a long trigger there. Each one good for a handful of pips or more. Once again, um, I found this on the internet inventory. I think it's Ron Hoffman's inventory reduction bars. So I implemented it and it seems to work good in Forex for a handful of pips. Now I believe he was a stock trader and going for much longer hold trades, but I adapted and adopted, um, this for Forex just to see if it worked. And it seems to prove out nicely. So if you're looking in the you know in the middle of the day, seeing just having these levels to show you where trades possible trades are. And you can see here yesterday's low, previous week's low, previous day's low. You can see we're breaking out of those wick zones right here and here. And since I've turned the computer on, not much is happening, really. Einstein line. You can see I've had it on for a while. And price right here gave some shorts. So... There you go, right there. So that's the weekly wrap up. Um, thanks for joining me this week, watching the videos and your comments. And just so you know, it's better if you if you post your questions on the forum or if you post them on the uh, YouTube video itself, or you can even post them on Facebook. I don't think that many traders look at Facebook. I guess there's a few, but um, it's better to do that than just have, you know, me and you going back and forth in the email because then only we're the only ones get the benefit from the conversation. So I hope you guys, you traders, have a really great weekend. Be safe out there. Hope you had a profitable week trading. And just remember, it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. So... Go out and enjoy the weekend. You earned it from a week of draining the banks.